Hello, good evening, lovely, lovely people. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're well. As always, I hope you've had a good week, you've had a good day, and hopefully you've got some productive plans uh, plan for the rest of the day, the rest of the week. So I hope you're all well. Thank you so much for joining once again. You let me in your homes every Sunday evening. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope you're all well. Right. Um, a little apology. <clears throat> Here's me apologising to you. A little apology. Um, I only posted a reel once. The week just gone. The week just gone. The week just gone. I only posted a reel once. The week just gone. Um, unfortunately, I've been dealing with lots of things, so apologies. I'm going to try and keep up with it a little bit better. Um, I've got quite a few plates that I'm juggling at the minute. So let me say it this way. I'm juggling quite a few plates. I'm juggling quite a few plates. Yeah, that's an idiom. What do you think it means? When I say I'm juggling quite a few plates, can anybody tell me what it means? Uh, I'm going to write this down so I can put it in the caption in YouTube. I'm juggling quite a few plates. What does that mean? Does anybody know? It means you're busy. Yes. Uh, hello. Hello. Thanks for joining. Busy. Yeah. Yeah. You have too much to do. I'm busy at the moment, too busy, very good, very good. So when you're juggling quite a few plates, uh, it's like each of those plates is one job, one task, one project, whatever. And I'm trying to juggle quite a few things. I'm trying to do quite a few things at the same time, um, which means obviously I don't have a lot of time spare. So yes, yes, I'm juggling quite a few plates at the moment, but I will definitely make time to make more um, reels and send to you lovely people. How are you finding, when I say how are you finding or how do you find, for example, how do you find my stories? What does that mean? How do you find? Does it mean as koja peda mikonid or does it mean something else? Because it's an idiom. How are you finding my stories? What does it mean? How are you finding? How are you finding? I might say, how are you finding work? How are you finding Tehran? How are you finding London? How are you finding your new neighbor? Yeah, it means, <coughs> excuse me, juggle. What do you, uh, sorry, not juggle. What do you think about? Very good. Very good. Well done. So if you want to ask somebody for their opinion, you will say, how are you finding the weather? Do you like the weather? Do you dislike the weather? How are you finding your new job? How are you finding? How are you finding? How are you finding your new neighbor? Are they okay? Are they quiet? Are they noisy? Right? How are you finding? Very good. Very good. So how do you find, how are you finding? These are idioms, which means, what do you think about? Thank you very much. So how are you finding my stories? Are you finding them too easy, too difficult? Do you think they're not helping? Should I change them? What do you think? I want to ask you, your opinion is very important to me. So let me know, how are you finding the stories that I post? Hmm. How are you finding? Yes. <laughs> very good. Really interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elham. Uh, mar so marvellous. Wow. Wow. Lovely. The stories are great. Not that easy. Not that hard. Thank you, Atafe. Very good. Amazing. Right. Edu educational. Yeah. Useful. Lovely. Lovely. Thank you. Nice and appropriate. Okay. Use useful. Most of them are very practical. Okay, amazing. Thank you, thank you. Um, stories are very helpful, fantastic. 
Obviously, stories, when I look at stories, uh, they're not really a lesson, okay? The whole idea of a story is just, what, 30 seconds, one minute, very quick, just for us to scroll as we're scrolling through all the many pages on Instagram. Uh, if there's anything interesting, I love to share it with you, but I don't want to waste your time. If you are landing on a story on my page, at least I like you to learn something if that's okay, even though it's not um, as serious as a lesson, at least there's something in there. So I'm happy that you're finding it helpful, useful, informative. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Okay. Lovely. Um, I just want to have a little word very, very quickly with the lovely students who will be starting my uh, second series podcast tomorrow. If you have enrolled, Thank you very much. Welcome to the course. Um, I have already sent all the students an email. I've sent them a welcome email. Every week for the next 10 weeks, every Monday, you will have one new podcast, <clears throat> excuse me, on my website. So I don't upload all the podcasts in one go, okay? Every Monday, you will have one new podcast on the website. Each podcast, I've tried not to speak too much. It's usually around 40 minutes, between 30 and 40 minutes, each podcast. Um, in the very first one, you're going to learn that if you see somebody in a supermarket, if you bump into your neighbour, if you bump into a friend at work, if you see a parent outside the school, you want to go pick your kid up at school. If you see someone on the street, if you want to talk to somebody in the queue, in the bank maybe, or anywhere, you just want to have a very, very short 30 second, one minute, two minute conversation, very, very short. How can you start? How can you start that conversation? So that's what the very first podcast is going to be about. Lots and lots of examples. I've told you exactly what I do, how I start these kind of conversations and how we all do that. So that's one thing you'll learn in the first podcast. And every session we're going to be talking about other things, mainly focusing on culture, focusing on speaking, focusing obviously on vocabulary, new words, all that kind of thing. So uh, the first one you will receive tomorrow. I'm saying this because I've received so many messages from you. When does it start? I've gone on the website. It's empty. It starts tomorrow. Okay, so the first one, you're going to find it on the website tomorrow. Uh, my website, if anyone's interested, it's on my page. It's on my Instagram page right under my bio. If you just click on there, that'll take you to the website. I can put it as a story tonight as well. Some sentences you use in idioms are especially belong to British. Would you please say us some of them, which also use in other countries like USA and Canada? That is from Majlisi, DRM Majlisi. Um, what you are requesting is absolutely reasonable, definitely. Some of the idioms that I use are used in any English speaking country, any English speaking country. And I usually um, make that clear. If it's in a story, if it's in the podcast or anywhere, I will say this can be used in any English speaking country. The reason why I specialize in British English is because that is the only type of English that I have very good control of. I'm not too sure about Canadian English. I'm not too sure about specific idioms that they use in Australia, New Zealand, you know. They've got their own specific idioms that they use that I am not aware of. But one thing I can tell you, um, as you know, these days, lots of Brits live in Australia. Lots of Australians live in America. Yeah, we live all over the place. I can tell you this much. Usually, if an English speaker, any English speaker, usually if they use an idiom, usually the rest of us 
can have a very good idea of what that idiom means. Even though we might not use it in our English, we still have a very good idea of what it means, okay? Um, if you're learning British English idioms from me and you want to use it in America or Canada, most probably those people there will understand what you're saying. They will not use them themselves, but they will understand what you're saying. OK, I hope that helps. Um, I will not be able to go and learn all of the idioms used in other English speaking countries. I can't do that. But that's something you can do if you come across an idiom. Just Google it and see what it means. Um, and then you can use it. Definitely. OK, lovely, lovely. Right. Um, now, the rest of this session is in your hands. I thought it would be a good opportunity to for all of us to try and answer any questions, if anyone has any questions, not just me, you as well. <laughs> you can help me answering some questions. Here we go. Um, right, Mahdia, please tell me, have online classes, thank you. Yes, <coughs> excuse me. So I do have some online classes, the online lessons that I teach myself. Unfortunately, all of those are full right now. Uh, and I've got quite a long uh, waiting list of students waiting to join those lessons. However, however, I'm very, very happy and excited that I do actually have, I am expanding my team, okay? And I've got two really, really fantastic, two lovely, lovely teachers who have come on board and they are also teaching as part of my team. Um, if your level is anywhere between beginner and intermediate, OK, if you're anywhere there, even upper intermediate, please do get in touch with me as a direct message, a DM on Instagram, and I'll send you a form that you can fill in with your details and I'll put you in touch with that specific teacher. I have spoken to the teachers a lot. We've talked a lot. We've had lots of online sessions together. Um, I am very comfortable and very confident with their level of English, which is why I'm introducing them to you, okay? It's my reputation, right? I can't have a teacher who teaches you incorrect English because it's my neck on the line. It's my neck on the line. So I promise you these two teachers, their English is very good, very good. Um, anywhere from beginner to upper intermediate, I have no worries. I have 100% confidence that they will be able to teach you very well. Okay, so just send me a DM. Um, dear Leila, here's my question. Here we go. Do you understand the other English accents fully and easily? That's from Mahsa Sahtkar. Uh, okay, that's a very, very good question, Mahsa. Thank you for asking that. Do we understand other British accents? The answer is yes. But it's not because we are clever or anything, no. It's because we have been in, or yeah, we have been in contact. We have heard these other accents all our lives. However, I will give you another example. It's a real example. There is a very, very, my, my cousin, my cousin, uh, she... She is British, obviously. She lives in um, Staffordshire, Stoke-on-Trent, which is another city. It's about one hour's drive away from Manchester. That's where she lives, my cousin. I love her. She's maybe three or four years younger than me. Um, she has lived in the UK. She was born in the UK, lived in the UK all her life. Her parents are British, obviously. She is 100% British. However... She is not very good with um, Irish, Scottish or Welsh or Liverpudlian accents. She doesn't understand them very well. Why? Because her ears haven't been trained. 
She just won't watch any Scottish programmes. She just doesn't have any Welsh or Irish friends. She stays in her own city. Obviously, she's very social, very active. She loves people, all that kind of thing. But her ears have not been trained for her to understand other accents. So she finds it really difficult when she has to phone a company and somebody in India answers with Indian English accent or somebody Chinese with a, with a Chinese English accent or someone, you know, with a Scottish accent or whatever. She really struggles. So this idea that I don't understand other English accents, um, it's not automatic with us. If our ears have heard it, then we're familiar with it. If not, no, even though somebody who is completely British. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Hi, Leila. This is from Barozande Shima. Thank you for your question. I'd like to know if it's advisable to switch my accent to British English after 20 years of speaking American. Okay. Thank you, Shima. Um, I'd like to know, just out of curiosity, just out of curiosity, I'm very curious, I'd like to know, is there a reason why you want to switch from American to British? Is there a reason for it? Um, so that's one thing, I'm just curious to know. Or if you want to switch from British to American, does it make a difference? Um, is it advisable? This, I think, is a, a very personal choice, isn't it? It's a choice that you have to make, really. Um, if you're thinking of moving to the UK, if you want to start sounding like, you know, the local people here for your own personal reasons, then it makes sense. Um, if it's a personal thing, it's something for yourself that you want to do, then absolutely fine. I can't advise people you should change your accent because that's a very personal thing. Um, so is it advisable? It depends on your own personal circumstances, to be honest. I have this belief. I have this theory. I have this philosophy. I have this belief that everybody should be comfortable in their own skin. OK, did I talk about this last week? Maybe be comfortable in your own skin. I think I did. I believe that everybody should be comfortable in their own skin. As a lot of you know, I lived in America for about four or five years and then I came back to the UK. While I was in America, I kept my British accent, even though it, it wasn't difficult for me to start practicing speaking with an American accent. It's not difficult. You listen, you copy, you learn, right? Uh, it's not difficult to speak with an American accent or Canadian or Australian or whatever. We just copy. But... I like to be myself. I didn't think I have to change. So it's a very personal thing, I think. Okay. Um, here we go. Princess Ma here. You help my English very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm really happy to hear that. Thank you. It's not just me. Obviously, you put in all the hard work, but thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, how much online classes, uh, the online classes, please DM me and, and I'll give you all the information, all the details. OK, um, there are so many British slang, Layla, such as faff around <laughs> that even native speakers get entangled with them. Is that vital to learn them? Thank you. Um, that's a very good question. Is it vital to learn slang? <clears throat> you, if you want to speak, you don't have to learn slang. No, you don't have to learn idioms. No, you can choose whatever vocabulary you want to and speak that way. OK, uh, I've, I've said this before. I'm sure 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 that's sorry no sorry that's not how we teach a language okay um i think whatever you want to use whatever english you already know is very good 
If it's a lot, if it's a little bit, it's fine. If you can communicate, that's it. That's it. That's all you need to do. Be able to communicate. Even if your English is very, very small, just a little bit, very low level, or, you know, you speak very fluently and it doesn't matter. As long as the listener understands what you're trying to say, that's the most important thing. Okay. Uh, the only reason why some of us, including myself, we teach slang, we teach idioms is because if you're talking to somebody in an office and that person starts using slang and starts using idioms, you might find it difficult to understand what this person's trying to say. Okay. I'm going to give you an idiom. A lot of you know the meaning of this idiom, but I'm just going to use it in this example. Let's say you've gone to your boss and hi, how are you? And your boss says, Layla, don't beat about the bush. Just tell me. Don't beat about the bush. Just tell me, Layla. Just tell me. Don't beat about the bush. OK, I'm going to ask you, what does it mean when someone says don't beat about the bush? Can anybody help me? And I'll write it down in the caption on YouTube as well. What does it mean? Don't beat about the bush or around the bush. What does it mean? Don't beat about the bush. I'm going to write this down. Don't beat about the bush. Thank you. Don't mess around, okay, okay. Tafre, tafre, Boros Aslematla, very good, Miss Layla 15. Yeah, very good, very good. Okay, excellent, thank you. Exactly. So don't beat about the bush is an idiom that means, look, don't tell me about all the extra things, I don't care. Just give me the important facts, the important information. Now, if my boss tells me this, he or she has used an idiom. And if I don't understand what this idiom means, it's going to make my answer a little bit difficult, right? Because I don't know what is this person saying, don't beat about the bush. There isn't a bush in the office. What are they talking about? So it's only in these situations that you might find communication a bit difficult. You don't have to learn slang. You don't have to learn idioms at all. You don't have to change who you are. Whoever you are, however much English that you know is perfect. Please stop trying to change yourself. You are perfect the way you are. For your confidence, just for your confidence, if you want to improve your English, that's fine. Please don't do it because other people expect you to. Yeah, do it for yourself. Okay, let's cut to the chase. Very good. Um, I thought you were sweet enough, okay? <laughs> Don't beat about the bush. Leila John, Chetor Mitunam Begam, Aklam Sare Josh Nist, Bengilisi. Aklam Sare Josh Nist. Um, Aklam Sare Josh Nist. Can somebody tell me what this means, please? I'm not sure exactly what it means. Aklam Sare Josh Nist. Yani, do you mean I've forgotten something? Do you mean I can't think straight today? What exactly does it mean? Can somebody help me, please? Um, okay, while you're helping me with that one, I've got somebody here, Massa, M-R-T-Z. How can we improve our Scottish accent understanding? Okay, so with Scottish, anybody in the world, not just you, anybody in the world who wants to improve their understanding of the Scottish accent, what can you do? Listen to Scottish material. It could be radio, podcast, it could be TV, cartoons, movies, programs, anything. We just need to train the ear to get this information, process it, so we know what it means. That's all it is. Very simple. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. Thank you. I've got translations. Lovely. Uh, my mind not here. Nemitunam tasmima sahih begiram. Aglam sare josh nist. Aglam sare josh nist. Nemitunam tasmima sahih begiram. Okay. Havosam parte. Tamarkos nadaram. Aslan tu hale khodam nistam. Magzam kar nemikone. I haven't come to my senses. Hmm. Um. Divune shodam. Okay. Um. 
confusing, I'm miles away, I can't think straight, yeah, we say that, I'm out of my mind, okay, uh, I can't think straight, right, aklam sarajoshnis, okay, so <clears throat> if you, I think I understand what the idiom means in Farsi, thank you for all the translations, um, if you are in a situation where you can't make a proper decision, okay, um, the, the different ways we say it, we don't have to use an idiom. For example, we can say, sorry, I'm struggling to come up with something. I'm struggling to come up with something. My mind basically is not working with me. I'm struggling to come up with something. Uh, we can use a little bit of humor, a bit of sarcasm, which is what I use a lot. You know, we use a lot in the British culture. Sometimes we say, I'm sorry, I've left my brain at home. Okay, so I'm in the office, I'm at work, or I'm with the doctor, the doctor's asked me a question and oh my God, I can't remember. I say, I'm sorry, I've left my brain at home. So that's a an idiom and it's sarcasm, it's a bit of humour. It's a different way of saying I, I can't answer right now. Another way of saying it is um, I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing a blank. There's nothing in here. I, I don't know what to say. It could mean I've forgotten. It could also mean I really don't know what to say. So there are different versions we can use. I hope that makes sense. Okay. I'm sorry. I left my brain at home. Yeah, we say, <laughs> we say that. Um I left my brain at home. Yeah, I'm sorry. And the reason why I can't say something right now, I can't answer you, I can't make a decision, uh, is either because I'm struggling to come up with something or I've left my brain at home. You like that, huh? <laughs> I can see some of you like that one. Okay, lovely. Thank you for your questions. I'm drawing a blank I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, that's another one. Good. Chetor mitunim begim nemitunam nabinam nemitunam nachoram. Okay. Um, do, we can say it two ways. We can say, I can't help. Um, I can't help but eat it. I can't help but eat it. That means I can't stop myself. Oh my God, it's so tasty. Your food, your cooking is so tasty. I can't help but eat it. Another way is what I just said. I can't stop myself from eating. I can't stop myself from eating. Yeah, I can't help but see it. I mean, I can't stop myself from seeing it. I can't help but see it. So those are different ways, yeah? I can't stop eating it, yeah? I can't help but eat it, very good. Um, I can't stop eating it, yeah? All of these, very good. Those are different ways we say. <laughs> yes. Tarof kerden be ingilisi çimişe. Okay, dorsa H A eight. Thank you. Tarof kerden. It depends. There is a whole category in Farsi culture for tarof, right? There's a whole category. Uh, the tarof could be when you are offering something. It could be when you accept or reject an offer. It could be when you're saying thank you. It could be lots and lots of things. So I'm not sure exactly which kind of tarof you mean. But I can say this, we don't usually have anything such as tarof in the in the Western culture, not just for the UK. I'm talking about Europe, I'm talking about America, Canada, all the way over in Australia, New Zealand, English speaking cultures. We don't usually have tarof that they do in the Iranian culture. The Iranian culture is beautiful, so respectful, so polite. You know, everything is tar off. It's really nice, really nice. Um, we don't really have that in our culture here. Um, let me give you a couple of examples. <clears throat> okay. Um, usually, yeah, so usually it's with our facial expression, our tone, 
that's how we show if I get somebody come to the door if a friend or somebody comes to the door and I want to say befarmoid befarmoid we don't have befarmoid in English so I would usually say come in come in or if I'm really friendly do come in do come in do come in when you add the verb do at the beginning of your sentence that means you're stressing you're adding a little bit of stress you want that person to really do that okay uh do sit down do sit down right do come in do come in um for example, do ask, do ask. So when we put do before the verb, that means, yes, please do that. So I guess that's one form of tarof, maybe. Yeah. Um, a lot of the things, a lot of the things that I teach you can ask my students a lot of the things that I teach in my classes during the week are basically the same things that I teach on my courses okay so if you just go on my website take a look at the courses that I've got take a look at the free lessons for the courses there's plenty of information there I've I've spoken a lot about different things that we say I've taught idioms, I've taught lots of vocabulary, we practice the pronunciation, and I also t talk a lot about the culture as well. Lots and lots of information on the courses as well. Do ask, very good. Minnat um, gozoshtan, what was this? Minnat gozoshtan chi mishe leila jun? Avalan ke in leila jun wa khali dostaram, khali احترام هست او از اینکه که بگین مثلا لیلا خانم لیلا جون هم دوستان است هم با احترام خیلی قشنگ این خیلی عادت قشنگ ایرانی است. Thank you so much We just say لیلا right? So this is very nice Thank you um, منت گذاشتن منت گذاشتن I'm not sure what that means Can somebody help me with that منت گذاشتن What does that mean? Please, sorry um به انگلیسی به جز enjoy okay yes interesting من اتفاقی دوره دارم توی وبسایت راجع به همین هست مهمونی چه شما میزبان باشید چه مهمان باشید تمام صحبت هایی که اول مهمونی داریم در طول مهمونی و آخر مهمونی همه اینا رو درس دادم اونجا um, English for parties, I think it's called. English for parties. Two parts in the course. One is if you're um, a, a guest, what do you say? The other part of the course is if you're the host, what do you say? Okay. Um, in that course, I've explained if you've got somebody, in the Farsi culture, we say Nusha John. Maybe before somebody starts eating, please correct me. From my understanding, um, before someone starts eating, we can say Nushajan, right? In the middle, while someone's eating or drinking, again, we can say Nushajan. And we can say Nushajan at the end once somebody's finished. Is that correct? Just let me know if I'm right or not. So Nushijan can go beginning, middle or end. Is that right? I just want to see if I'm right. <clears throat> bon appétit, yeah. Um, bon appétit is used for foods and meal, not for drinks. Okay, right. Uh, yes, oh, thank you, thank you, Samira, thank you, Mona, thank you, thank you, yes, so, um, Nushajan can be the beginning, the middle, or the end, very good. We do have something that some people are saying, uh, bon appétit, bon appétit, bon appétit, which is French, we can say that, uh, but usually, if we want to say Nushajan before the food has started, before that person wants to start eating, we say, I hope you like it. Because that person hasn't started eating yet, so I don't know. We just say, I hope you like it, yeah? Or, I hope you like turkey. I don't know. نفقد دست پخت من. امیدوارم کلن شما اصلا بوغلمون دوست داشته باشید که من درست کردم. I hope you like chicken. 
من نمیدونم ازتون نپرسیدم ببخشید امیدوارم مرغ دوست داشته باشید فقط دست پخته من نه کلا مرغ دوست داشته باشید I hope you like turkey I hope you like chicken for example And then if I want to specifically ask about my food my cooking I say I hope you like it I hope you like it yes And then when you have finished eating you say it was very nice I say okay great glad you liked it glad you liked it or I'm happy you liked it yeah uh, there are other things I've taught on the course English for parties where it's it's the tradition we can say um I need to get the recipe I need to get the recipe please give me the recipe because this was really good yeah or the host can say I'll give you the recipe I'll give you the recipe I think I don't know Um, آیا درست متوجه شدم لطفا تصحیح کنید من چون اینجا شاید اشتباه باشه درک من آیا درست متوجه شدم که بین ایرانی ها وقتی که یه نفر یه چیزی درست میکنه مثلا اوکی خیلی دوست ندارن راز خوشمزگی غذا رو به همه بگن مثلا if you're adding a bit of saffron if you're adding maybe a bit of cardamom hill if you're adding a special kind of herb سبزی خیلی دوست ندارن به همه بگن او آره این کارو کردم این کارو کردم برای همین خوشمزه شد بیشتر پیش خودشون نگه میدارن is that correct is that correct درست <laughs> Okay, it's good. It's good. You don't want to give your secrets. Yeah, it's your secret. You might have learned it from your parents, your grandparents. You might have exper- experimented yourself, right? And, you know, you've come across <laughs> with your own recipe. Great. Keep it to yourself. Absolutely. But uh, in the Western culture, we're very happy to share the recipe. Yeah, I'll give you the recipe, the, the host. Yeah, I'll give you the recipe. Or the guest, oh, I'm going to have to get that recipe off you. I'm going to have to get that recipe off you. This was really nice. In ham khodesh, ye no taruf has ke, yani in qaza khayli khoshmaze bud. So we don't have to use the word tasty, it was really nice. These are other ways that we can show that food was amazing. It was really good. یه حالت دیگه بعد دیگه مزاحم نمیشم چون وقتم تمام شده میخوام بگم خیلی خوشمزه بود It went down a treat اینو خیلی شاید شنیده باشن It went down a treat It went down a treat یعنی چجوری میگن It went down a treat Can anybody help me? Oh my goodness my farsi is getting so bad Can anybody help me? Um, it went down a treat How can we say that in farsi? It went down a treat. Not everybody. Okay, okay. Uh, it went down a treat. خیلی به هم مزه داد. Okay, okay. خیلی به مزه داد. خیلی چسبید. Maybe. خیلی چسبید. Yeah. خیلی مزه داد. Lovely, lovely. Yes, it went down a treat. It was so delicious. Absolutely. It was delicious. It was so delicious. خیلی چسبید. Uh, رقیب نداره. Wow. Wow, very good. Yes. So all of these, as you can see, these are different ways that we can say that the food was excellent. It was really nice. Yeah. Different ways. Lovely. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope I was able to answer a few of your questions. People who've signed up for podcast series two, please look out. The first one will be on the website tomorrow. Um, if you're part of the English for Work course, your next lesson will be out on the website tomorrow. If you have bought the Mr. Men stories, the next Mr. Men is Mr. Mean. That's going to be on the website tomorrow and all of these. If you have any questions about any of my courses on the website, please let me know. And I will try to be a bit more regular with my reels. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Have a fantastic evening. Be productive, be safe, and I'll hopefully see you very soon. Take care. Good night.